<laughs> Would you oh, be interested that's... if you were approached by like a major film studio to play Joe Exotic in the in the biopic? Would you think about it? I'm not. It's not going to happen for me. That's listen. Um, you know, I, I'm maybe more of husband material. You know, I can maybe squeeze in one of the, one of those lads, the guy with no teeth. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> potentially, yeah, that's sort of more my, kind of, you know. Uh, what, than why did Joe not hook him up with just a couple more, a couple more teeth? Like, because he's he was giving him everything else. <laughs> no, but did you hear in the aftermath of it all? Um, that poor guy apparently has had his teeth fixed, and he was like raging that they they'd done the documentary and hadn't, and they actually had film footage of him with proper teeth and they hadn't used any of that footage. <laughs> totally done him over by only showing him with like three teeth. Uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, I like that. Like, I mean, this this whole situation, this whole lockdown, everything. It's obviously so terrible. But I like that the one yeah. thing that's bringing everybody together, no matter what your background, location, is just this this exotic zoo owner, Joe Exotic. I mean, I know it's it's mad. But the whole thing is, is like him. Obviously, is a standout figure in it all. But the whole world, like, you have to be a total lunatic, obviously, to be involved in the big cat game in any realm at all. You have to be not like. You have to be nuts to be given a big cat, or certainly to like be given a sanctuary for them. I mean, I, I, that was just like such a band of misfits. Like I couldn't believe that there are so many weird people in, involved in one thing. You know, I mean, I mean, I think to have like the own one tiger, you would have question marks over you. But whenever you go, I own ninety six <laughs> of these, and uh, also I've got fourteen wives. Sure. What I like is the guy. Who's like Joe Exotic's mentor, Doc? You know the guy with like the long hair. I heard yeah, yeah. him. I, I heard him in a podcast last week, and they were like, "Why do you have so many wives?" And he goes, "Oh, Netflix really fucked me." He's like, "A lot of those people that were shown were like some of them were my grandkids, some of them were just neighbors and stuff. Like they were just putting everyone in his wives category." So, I mean, I, th- I think there's uh, there's the odd spoof along the way, but. But like big, I mean, as soon as this lockdown lifts, all those big katsus are going to do serious business. Like, or they're they're done for. Either one or the other. They no, I still think. Exist. I still think. Like, if you said to me, like, would you be interested in heading over to Joe Exotic Zoo? E- even even the lunch, I'd even rest the lunch. I would just like the beer. I like the atmosphere. <laughs> I like everything that's going on. I like his songs. I'm just I'm just obsessed. Like most people. Um, taking on taking on the meat feast at, the, at his uh, pizzeria. <laughs> well, well, that's how it's, it's just not something I want to find myself to be honest. When Joe Exotic says come round for a meat feast, that's not what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Stop crust, yes, please. Look, um, do I want anyone, to talk. Anyone? Do you reckon anyone in Northern Ireland ever entertained the idea of having an exotic animal? I mean, there's 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 definitely fellas with like there's bound to be like fellas with sheep that they're spray painting uh, black and orange at the minute. Like definitely, that's I mean, it would be like a counterfeit exotic zoo. Like it wouldn't be the real, it wouldn't be the real animals at all. Oh good. but there, the there's definitely one itself guy. has some Belfast zoo itself has some animals that don't look right. Oh, I remember going to see the polar bears in the early nineties, and those guys did not know what was happening. Like, no, I I went. Um, uh, I'm, it sounds like I'm trying to crowbar in some stuff about my career here, but um, <laughs> before we did the first series of Fall, myself and and Brona and the kids who were playing um, our kids, David and Sarah, really sweet, and, and their parents, we all went to Belfast Zoo to do a bit of a bonding thing, so that when we came to film, we'd, we'd have some sort of you know idea that we looked like a real family and we, we knew each other with it. And I, it was the first time I'd been to Buffalo City in you know twenty years probably at the time. And uh, it was alarming. I mean the the uh, the gorillas <laughs> the gorilla was beating himself in the head, like literally in the corner, just like whacking himself in the face. And I was like, I'm pretty sure this isn't what it's meant to be like. But it's, I, I mean I don't even it's Belfast too. Like I don't even know if that is a gorilla or just like a guy. You know what I mean? Like I think it might well just be a guy who's who's pulling a fast one. I'm not totally that's, sure. That's not a bad gig. I remember whenever that I was, was like five or six going to Belfast too, um a couple of my cousins took me and a peacock got out. And you would have thought that 
the world had been invaded by by tigers. I mean, a peacock got out, yeah, yeah. and it wasn't interested in going around everyone. And I remember the sheer pandemonium, and then people being like, "An animal's got out." Oh, sure. I mean, definitely let people know quickly that it's just a peacock. I still ran like a peacock. But... It's, it's still it's a very beautiful animal. I'd be mesmerized if I saw a peacock out in the streets of uh, North Belfast. Let's see. Um, uh, but the, the animals escape from Belfast City all the time. Yeah, I think they're pretty relaxed. Like, I think it's like you know, like an open prison, Belfast. I'm pretty sure it's like you know, come and go, <laughs> just just be just just be back for seven, sort of thing. Like it's <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm pretty sure some of those penguins work in the KFC and Boucher. You know, like they're not as strict as, as some other zoos, but it's a good uh, time. I want to ask you about KFC and Boucher's I want to ask you about them. Um, do you say KFC and Butcher's clothes? And it's not really, you know what I mean? If you know a fella, you can still... Nah, but you know, uh, if you know you. a fella, you can, you can get sorted out. Um, when this it. lockdown started, I saw yeah. a video that hundreds of millions of people have seen. The the Imagine video with a load of actors, well-known people singing John Lennon's song, Imagine. How did you Hello. get involved with that? How did that come about? Because you're like the second guy in it. Yeah, it goes by billing of importance. From no one knows who you are to like superstar by the end. <laughs> um, listen, it's, it's a funny thing. Not being on social media, I wasn't really that aware of the negative reaction to it. Um, but I got it. Um, I was made aware quite <laughs> quite quickly um, by some mates. But you know, it's it's like it's early on in the lockdown process. Um, gal who organized it, she organized it with Kristen Wig. Uh, Kristen Wig and I did a movie together last summer that's meant to be coming out this summer on the 31st of July. Who knows what's gonna happen because of it? Might be there, they're still hoping it'll get a cinematic release. Who knows? So, Kristen and I did this movie together in the summer and we're just going on brilliantly. And, um, I would I'd do anything for it, but you know, I, that's how highly I. By the way, I'm like the biggest fan of hers before. Oh, she's, I she's her anyway. great in everything. It's, it's, it's a genius. Um, so um, her and Annie Momolo, who wrote Bridesmaids together, they've written this thing and they're both in this thing that I've done. Um, and so Kristen texts me, uh, you know, whatever, two days before that came out, saying, um, uh, hey, you know, whatever, user, this is all mad. Listen, uh, my friend Gal and I are, ch- are trying to organize this thing um to try to lift, <laughs> lift people's spirits a wee bit um of everything that's going down and um we basically just want you to sing a line of the margin um you can either pick between this line and this line i was like yeah fine well, of course i'll do that sounds like a lovely thing to do um you know and then the, and then christmas actually we want you to sing this like no hell below us i was like yeah, that's fine i'll do that and it's literally a case of um you know putting the kids the kids are like driving your mad going, oh yeah, I get you that. Oh, two seconds, daddy has to go and do this thing. Yeah, no, she's actually texting me about now. Hold on, I'll go and do it. Hold on. No, hold on. No, no. Okay, right. What, what is it? No. That's what happens. Um, and then you you send it to Chris and she's like, perfect, this is great. It's going to be great. <laughs> and then whatever happens, happens. And Chris and like texts me like a couple of days later going, sorry. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what? I was like, what do you, I was like, what do you mean? And um, she said, well, there's been a lot of negative stuff at all, whatever. We're just trying to do a nice thing. I was like, yeah, listen, I understand. But I had got a mate. I had one of my mates, uh, another actor, had texted me saying, um, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm just watching this uh, just watching this video of all these like, pompous, like, self-righteous, wanker actors singing the mud. Oh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and then, you know what? I actually have... I haven't gone and looked at it. I haven't gone and looked at what people are saying. But you know what? I tell you what the problem was. I literally did mine in like the toilet or something in my house. Um, there's a little bit too much. Like it's, it's, everyone's in a very weird space at the moment. Um, some, uh, you know, everyone's on their phone constantly. And some stuff people are finding uplifting. Sometimes people are whatever. But there's too much like, there's too much of quite clearly people have escaped to their second home. Um, there's too much acreage in the background. <laughs> I felt, you know, too much like beautiful swinging trees clearly by an ocean. 
that sort of crack. And I was like, oh, and I was quite aware of that when I was doing it. I was like, I don't like, like, I was just make it normal, not as normal as Ruffalo, who I was like, <laughs> straight like that, close to his face. But, um, listen, whatever. I mean, you know, well, you know what can Were I, you what tempted can I to go falsetto? I tried to. Well, that's also a thing. I, I, nearly, I nearly text Chris and go, what key? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, just go for the, go for the way it's you know the way we all know it the way that John sang it and played it or do we you know because you don't you know what I don't I, I don't know anyone else who's involved I don't Chris hasn't said so far I've got Mark Ruffalo and well Sarah Sarah Silverman he hasn't told me I don't she hasn't told me I don't so um, I don't know what I'm in with what like how seriously are people taking it like us or. I guess it meant to be sung really well, you know what I mean? So I thought my best approach is to do it quickly and get off. Um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but that's such a that's such a nowadays thing to be angry at that. It's like, come on, we'll lift people's spirits. We were like, no. No, absolutely. I mean, listen, break it all down. That's a very well-known, successful, beautiful person who I, I've never, I said, I've never met, but everyone I know says he's, and lovely and she, she's all about like being good and kind and essentially that she's trying to do a good and kind thing <laughs> just gets nailed for it um and, you know i just got dragged along with it but listen i, I you know what what am i gonna do you you talked about um the fall earlier which um i think no i, I know they were filming a lot of stuff back home before that but it, it kind of paved the way for loads more stuff to be to be filmed back home but um, do do you enjoy filming back home, or do you find that like is it a wee bit of a distraction? Because like, I guess you get a lot of people being like, "Come and do this," and you know, a lot of friends want to hang mm. out and stuff like that. I'm happy to hang out with my mates. <laughs> <Not, not, laughs> you know, if my mates hang out, I quite like that. But more the the former there. Um, to be honest. Listen, I love filming at home. Like I love it so much, you know. And I've 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 been quite conscious about trying to play Irish characters so far in my career, and I plan to do that throughout my career if I can. And um, set up a production company at the moment. And we've got like two projects that are very much set in in um, two of them set in the north, one set in Dublin. Um, and you know, I was lucky enough for the fall to come back for three series to do that. I just filmed this thing with Emily Blunt before Christmas down in, in, in over in Mayo. Um, and that is important to me to keep doing that and tell stories from home. Um, because I, I, you know, slightly biasedly think I think Irish people are the best people in the world, they really do. And it's it's, it, it is such a unique thing to work with an Irish crew, Northwest, South East, whatever, just Irish people. It's, uh, why is it call ended? Why is it saying call ended? Not, it's not sent for me. It's not for me. Sent for me. Can you, am I still recording? I, yeah, I can still, I can still see and hear you. Yeah. No, I'll oh, listen, I'll take these off for a second. Um, but you know what I mean? It, like working with a purely Irish crew like that is, um, it's brilliant. It's brilliant because you just have this total shorthand understanding of each other and you're not having to explain yourself and you can talk in the way you want to talk and no one's going, oh, what you, so what was that? Like, A, literally, literally not understanding what you're saying or not getting the joke or whatever it is. Yep. It's great being on the same wavelength as a whole crew. So I'll always try to do stuff at home if I can. And, um, and I love it. Listen, I'd probably get more... Uh, hostile or more tension at home than, than, than any, anywhere else. But, uh, and I, that can be a, a wee bit frustrating, but you know, you can, um, you can play to that, you know, I'm not going to go to Lavery's on Friday night, you know what I mean? Like, or the bot on a Wednesday night, the student that would like, really, don't know how it works back home anymore, but you know, like I'm not. With a crew jacket from the fall. Crew jacket. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm not doing that. Um, uh, I've been out with you. We've, we've had a, we've been out in Hollywood a couple well, of times. That, that's. Nice. I was going to say that's why Hollywood's great because yeah, you can slip under the radar. Like it's it's very you know the bars and stuff yeah. are very non fancy. It's not about 
it's kind of just about like going out and drinking. You know, literally, it's people who have their heads in their pints and and they they yeah. know to give you like a bit of a, a bit of a bible. Yeah, kind of. it, it's not people going out to be seen and go to like most like Ollie's or right? like I'm, I really haven't been out in like club in Belfast in Same. 15 years probably. But you know, um, but it, that's not the crack in Hollywood. And um, if I'm out in Hollywood, I'm usually with my mate Dermy, who I think you've probably met. Who yep, is Dermy and Mikey. Driver. Yeah, yeah, Mike, exactly. So Dermy's was my driver on the fall, the whole through the whole series and this film, Death and Nightingales, which I did back in uh, home a couple of years ago. And he's like family to me now, like he's like like with my entire family and um uh I love him very much and he uh loves drinking and uh and is like Mr. Hollywood, has lived in Hollywood for a very long time and yeah um so I've usually got him by my side, and he's a he's a he's a imposing uh, physical presence, um, and I, it's kind of great because I just sort of each shields you from people, whatever. And uh, yeah, I remember that night we had I I been at the rugby uh, Ireland Italy um, with Mikey Rogers. Um, would have been two thousand fifteen, I think, because it was uh, on, yeah, it was yeah. Drico's last it was Drico's last ever home game. Yep. Um, the Aviva, and we had been on it all day from sort of you know ten thirty a.m. in the car with Derby on the way down, you know, uh, right back, and then like on the way we were like wrecked, and we were like, should we go for an Indian in Hollywood <laughs> on the way back with the Indian Ocean? Mike, within three what minutes, smashed the, smashed the bottle of wine, smashed it all over the floor, red wine. Was, was um, that just to announce? Entry. Was that just to announce your entry? It <laughs> was. It was. Go I said I'll wait outside. I, I, I wait outside. Just go on. Don't be long. It's freezing. Go on out there and just just turf a bottle. <laughs> <Let> the, <laughs> um, drop a Merlot and let them know I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good times. But yeah, that was great. I mean, th- that's one of those ones where like. Even I was like, and we we chatted on Twitter and stuff like that before. But even I was like, you know what? You probably don't get many nights out at home. I was like, I'll say hello, and then before I knew it, a couple hours later, there's like twelve of us getting like a, a five a side football photo taken at the top of the high street. Some boys are down, <laughs> knelt so in front. Mate, that literally popped up on my, you know, your like, memories or whatever the crack yeah, is on my yeah. phone the other day, and I was actually that's what's. That's what got me to then email you and go here. Should we do a podcast? Um, because it came up. And I was like, who the fuck? <laughs> like, who's that lot? And then you're, you're in the back. I'm doing like the captain's pose, yep. with like as if I'm holding like a like a ball or something, like <laughs> for a trophy. It's very uh, weird, but that yeah, that was you know, that was a great uh, night and and uh, just an ultra serious photo. I mean, everybody's taking that taking that totally seriously. <laughs> we, we talked about actually joining like a seven aside league or something. Like that. <laughs> just to get, just to get photos like that. And we, and we all got matching tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's class. We, we all got the date. We all got the date tattooed on our arses. It was a good, it was a good time. 